got into this business all by accident. Uh, I, I didn't come to Nashville by accident. I came here to be a songwriter. Hi, I'm Walter Carter with Carter Vintage Guitars. I've got a few guitars to show you here for guitar.com. Well, Nashville uh, is one of the few cities with three major interstates through it. it, it, it's, it that reflects its, its status as sort of a transportation crossroads that, that goes back more than 100 years. And I think that's one of the reasons that the music business became centered here, the country music business, because uh, it's a central point for touring musicians. In June of 2013, we opened the doors here. Uh, there wasn't a guitar on the floor. They were all on the walls. We probably had 75 guitars. And now we have no space to walk on the floor as we're busting out at the seams. Uh, we've got 1,700 guitars and we, we can't seem to stop it. Our, our store is a, is a, I wouldn't say messy, but um, you know, quaintly crowded. Let's say, like an old bookstore or something. Yeah. People are, people who, who don't haven't known us from the beginning are very surprised that we've only been in business for six years. All of us, as kids and to some degree as adults, have gone into guitar stores where it seems like they don't want you to play the instruments, and especially as a kid when. They knew you didn't have enough money to buy a guitar, but you were so, you know, you, you wanted to play one. And we just didn't want people to feel that way. And Pete Townsend came in one day and uh, bought four instruments, and spent a good deal of money. And uh, one of the instruments he bought was a, a 60s J200, like the one he, he used on the Tommy record. And he, you know, he picked it up. We, we were doing, I was doing pretty good and acting very cool until he, he picked up that guitar and said, you know, oh, it's the pinball wizard model. And then he played the lick and I, I went, oh, <laughs> you know, that's, wow, Pete Townsend. And, you know, Carlos Santana came in early on. He was maybe the first really big star that just, he drove by and, and thought it looked like a cool place because of the mural on the outside wall and, and came in and, uh, ended up buying a guitar. But Kevin Costner sat down on a bench out there, nobody recognized him. He sat there for 20 minutes playing some, and his daughter lives here and, and sings with him, and they were they, you know, going through a few things, and I, nobody even knew it was him. Well, there's certainly a new segment of the industry, uh, or a job market for people who are good at aging. It was hard for some people to accept, you know, why should I pay more money for a guitar that, that's been beat up? And, um, and purposely beat up. I mean, why would you, why would you do that? So there's a segment that wants, still wants a new instrument. I, I think it, maybe it's given some people a wider appreciation of older instruments. This is a Gibson Flying V uh, from the original series in 1958. And I think the story's pretty well known of how Gibson came to design this and a. a, a more radical guitar called the Explorer and a, and a weirder thing called the Modern. Uh, and that was uh, as a reaction to some remarks that Leo Fender allegedly made about Gibson being a stodgy old company and never having had a new idea. And, and, and so this was going to knock Fender out of the water, this design. It was $247.50, I think, new in 1958. It was a complete flop. They sold 98 of these. It's still an awkward guitar to play. Uh, you see they added a, a little rubber strip here, so as if you were gonna play this guitar sitting down, maybe it would, it would slide, but it, it, it slides anyway, so it, it's really, uh, it's a guitar that you have to play standing up and, and, and maybe jumping all around. It's not exactly the holy grail, but, uh, but it's close. Uh, Ellis McDaniel, who's uh, better known as Bo Diddley, made this guitar. You know, Bo is, is one of the, uh, the least uh, recognized of, of the uh, very imaginative guitar designer. But this was uh, made in 2001. I think he died in 2007. This is a, a CD player here. I'm, uh, I'm not sure whether it was there for karaoke purposes or just so he could play along with himself or his favorite music as he walked around the house. 
uh, this was brought to us by his grandson who said he remembered Bo you know, walking around the house and playing this thing. The body appears to be uh, plywood, probably uh, routed out some and then with, with one big piece of wood on top. I guess this would be the Bo Diddley CD model. Find another. This guitar is, uh, was made by the Selmer Company of Paris, France, and designed uh, by a fellow named Mario McAfee, uh, whose name is uh, pretty much synonymous with gypsy jazz music. He's got some sort of resonator apparatus in here to, to guide the sound out. It's, it's, uh, it, he did not leave the guitar to its own devices to to get the sound out. Typically, these are strung with, with lighter strings. They're more responsive to light strings. But, but, but it, you know, it's got a, a, real, a real pop. This strange little guitar uh, is like nothing that was ever made before, it, because it is the first viable electric guitar ever made. It was made in 1932. Uh, one of the uh, uh, shareholders in that company was Adolf Rickenbacker and it became the, the Rickenbacker company eventually. So it's got the horseshoe pickup that's pretty familiar on, on all Rickenbacker lab steels in the, from the 30s uh, well into the 50s. Uh, still one of the best pickups ever made. This guitar sounds as good as anything in our shop, still without any alteration. This guitar was owned by a fellow named Gage Brewer, in, uh, who was from Wichita, Kansas, and he had a dance band. The Wichita paper uh, made mention of the upcoming dance, and it was going to be on Halloween night, and Gage Brewer and his band, and he would uh, unveil the new sound of his brand new electric guitar. So it's documented right to the day when he when he first played it in public. The existence of this guitar changed everything going forward. And unlike the first TV or the first computer or even the first automobile, uh, this guitar is not archaic in any way. The importance of the electric guitar in our culture is, is, can be understated and, and it's you can pinpoint it right to here. This is where it started.